Right, so, um, yeah, so I'll record this while I put it on YouTube. Uh, but, yeah, so like I was saying, the one of the biggest things is, A, your um, overall kind of abilities are just not coming out fast enough because you didn't have the settings on. On top of that, another really big thing that's killing you, and it's killing you, is that you play on locked cam. Right, okay, yeah. So, if, say, for example, uh, we were playing rugby, and I throw a ball at you, but you're blindfolded. What would you say the chances are of you catching that? Even though I'm probably terrible. Very well. Okay. Sure now, where it is. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if it was roughly by you, like maybe, uh, what, we'd have maybe like a 20% chance of actually, yeah. you know, pulling it off. So what you're currently doing in game is you're basically playing blindfolded constantly. And because of this, you're not getting enough information, so you can't even make the right decisions before they actually come. Now, so this is one of the biggest things that's actually proving to be an issue for you. And we'll go over kind of examples of this and the other kind of things that are going a little bit wrong in the game. We'll ignore the flash. But. So, yeah, yeah. right, so one of the first big things, um, and one of the biggest basics to jungling, kind of fundamentals, is deciding where you're going to path from and when you're going to path to. Now, uh, J4 red buff is great, don't get me wrong, but you don't really need to get it first. If, say, for example, this top lane is, let's say, an Aurelia, uh, and we go there top once and get her a kill, chances are she's going to potentially snowball up like crazy, especially since yeah. one of her spikes is 900 gold. So... Because this is a volley bear, volley bear is a skirmishy lane bruiser kind of tanky ish champion. But even though he does have some okay setup with his Q, the chances are we just want to leave him on an isolated lane. Because in bot lane, we have an Alistair, which means that we are going to lose prior, but we clear um, unconventionally with J4. We don't like look to full clear. We just look to get pressure on the map as soon as possible since level 2 is basically your biggest spike. And this kind of one of the difference between playing in lower elo and trying to push through these elos is you need to try and get a mental advantage wherever possible. Now this is really, really important because people's mentals in this game are completely short and they're terrible. So if you can abuse that, you'll climb way, way faster. So... We get red buff, this is fine. So right here, um, this is kind of one of the things. So if we look at this right now, what information are we getting in this screen? Well, what is telling us? Nothing. Exactly. So one of the biggest things with League is the game is just entirely information based. So the reason that's just insane is because... If we have that information and we have the experience or knowledge to capitalize on it, then we can basically carry a very large amount of games. So right here, like our main concern should be that this fight has just gone down and there's just been a long skirmish and we didn't see any of it. Now we did look here, but I think this is when I prompted you to look. So, uh, but yeah, so now we see, okay, Kale's really low. We're not going to go for Krugs. Krugs take too long anyway on J4 and we have that level two. Make sure you just kill it off though. Your burn will never drop it below one HP. Right, okay. Uh, yeah, and that's, then... that's, I think that's one of the things that I have been messing up on is like thinking the burn's going to tick it. Oh yeah, no, no, just, it, it, it won't tick it below it one. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if it still applies to this. It doesn't apply to this season anymore, but there used to be a um, a jungle item previously called Juggernaut, which was the tank version, um, which basically would keep it on one no matter what from the burn. Um, so right here, so right, this is another, another really big thing. So this is kind of the rugby analogy again. Um, right now, we know that somebody's about to pass a ball to us, but we have no idea where it's coming from, if that makes sense. It's because right here, we're not looking, and our focus is on our champ right now when it should be on mid. Now, this is kind of another really big thing you want to do, is your minimap should be your way to control your champion. And when I say that, I mean right here, your camera... I'm just open your camera should be focused over this mid lane so that when you get into this brush you can just click in this brush right and just path towards it but because of that uh, what we should be doing is looking why is this not is looking mid and then just sitting in this brush waiting for her to walk up and then we just jump on her but right now we're just watching ourselves 
And then we F key, which F keying, don't get me wrong, is amazing when you're junk clearing camps out and you're kind of looking around the map for things to do. F keying's great, but in this situation, you're you just want a, the the overall picture of the lane. It's because right here, if we see, we get here, and she is ready to gank, but we only just about see it because of where she's kind of positioning. So this is, like I said, one of the things that's highly screwing you as well, is this kind of. Um, the the way your E works due to A, you having indicator on, and B, I think currently at the moment, our clicks are a little bit slow. So what other kind of games do you play? Anything specific or? Uh, I used to play what, uh, RuneScape. Oh, wait, banger. I actually spam RuneScape like crazy. Maxed, what can I say? Uh, but Yeah, I'm, I'm maxed as well. Hell yeah. Um, so one of the big things um, that I would maybe suggest is if you have you ever heard of a game called Osu? Uh, no. Okay, so it's not for everybody. Don't get me wrong. It's it, it, it's basically like a. It's have you ever played Guitar Hero? Yeah. It's like Guitar Hero, but with a mouse and keyboard, and a little bit more complex. But the advantage to Osu is it's all about the accuracy of your clicks. So the more accurate and fast you are with your clicks, the better you'll be at Osu. Now this will also kind of translate into League. I mean, you can use other kind of real-time strategy games, things like StarCraft, but the barrier to kind of getting to the point where your improvement will help you in League is way higher in StarCraft, I think, than something like Osu. But, so one of the things that you do with Osu is it will teach you to be faster with your clicks and more accurate. So, you know, if you start playing that, give it a month of playing that, and you'll already see massive improvements just with how that works. Because right here, see how slow your flag was? Yep. Like, this should be instant. Now, another big thing with your flag is the way you want to view it is your E is an ability that you're using to hit them with. And then your Q is your follow-up. So right here, you kind of, you place your E, like where she, like behind her, whereas, you know, this should have just been on top of her. Now, yeah, as I felt like I wanted to... I was like expecting her to like to flash or move away as soon as she saw me, so I was trying to predict that movement kind of thing, if you know what I mean. Okay, so even if she does flash, it's completely fine. Because as we saw in this game, all we're trying to do is get her flash. Because she's against a Silas. Silas's reach is really, really big. So yep. it doesn't really matter too much. So as long as he gets on her. Now another thing that you should be looking for here too, and this is something we will actually cover a little bit more is league is all about fundamental skills now if we've got say like a the this is what you need to gank what do you think the three main kind of priorities should be going through your head in regards to actually ganking what are you looking for in the lanes um i'm looking at first minion wave and um Either like if it's if they've got a huge minion wave, it's not always good to gank. Okay, because to, of taking yeah, damage to, to some degree. Um, but yeah. if we're, I mean, that's a bit more complex because there's also situations where a big minion wave can be good. Because if you gank them, kill them, the laner can freeze the wave. Probably not yeah. something for this elo, but uh, I mean more at kind of like a basic level. If we're to strip it down to the bare bones of ganking, say if we right now isolated only this area. And said, okay, what are we looking for in this area when it comes to the success of our ganks? What do you think it should be? Oh, it'd be based on how far up in the lane that they are pushed compared to P their tower. And potentially. What side, of the, what side of the lane they're on compared to what side of the lane that you're coming from. So if they're on the far side from you in terms of where you're coming from river, it's going to be a lot harder to get to them. Okay, potentially. Um, the other thing, I mean, you are kind of right. Their position in the lane does reference to um, any kind of sort of mobility. So if they have mobility and they're up the lane, it's a little bit easier for them. If this is like a LeBlanc here, probably not gankable, but since the Kale it is. So mobility is one of the fundamental things to kind of when you're deciding where to gank. There's two other things. So what do you actually need to kill them? Like, what do you need to do in order to kill them? Oh, knock them up. Yeah, so CC is one thing. But not just your CC. Also CC. Silas's. Your, team, your, team, your teammate to engage, yeah. Yeah, so their ability to set up the gank is very, very important and is something to always know. The last one, it's kind of obvious, but it's just damage. Like, you, yeah. if you were ganking a Scion right now and he's playing into an Aatrox, like... There's no real point. Like, Scion's gonna become tanky eventually. 
Aatrox is going to be kind of hard to kill. Um, it's the same way as if I was the red team's jungle there, I wouldn't gank for the Kale because Kale's not going to be able to do anything. Yeah, yeah, she's no. she's a lame bully to some degree, uh, but she's not going to be able to set up a kill for you. Unless, obviously, if it's say the Kale is here, like, obviously, this is gankable, but when it's in yeah. this position, we're looking for these kind of indicators and these factors, and these are kind of the things we're looking for when we're determining where we're going to camp as well. So what lane we're going to focus on primarily, we would find that out based on... Who has enough damage for us to get kills? Who has a lack of mobility? Say if this is, again, a Kale, TF, Cassidin, Ari, anybody with that lack of mobility, like we can just nail them down. CC is obviously for how we play the ganks. And this is kind of important here because one of the things we do is we we go, but we go instantly instead of pinging. So the Silas might not even realize you're here, but what we should have looked to do is just ping. And then Silas can walk up with his E and get on top of her first and then once silas has eat her then we eq it so we we're always looking to chain our cc however possible um and obviously i mean javin's great for this because he has enough cc on his own and especially if you've got flash what you can also do is if say for example you eq and you're playing well in in platinum this will happen say if you know they've got flash and they're going to flash to here what you can do is eq and then you can flash to this area and it'll still knock them up so until you reach your flag which is here right now until you reach this flag your knock up will be wherever you move to so if you flash up here you'll knock up there here you'll knock up there you won't get the damage so if the damage is needed then you don't want to do it but overall um you'll always come to this flag now there's another there's a few more interesting things you can do about this say we've got a kale here and the viego's here right say if we drop our flag here let's say it's an eve actually we drop the flag here and eve reveals and we're like oh you know we want to knock up what we can actually do is q and then flash to here and it'll still go through like this and knock them both up. So uh, yeah, I've heard about that. Yeah, so you can just EQ anybody if you flash on top of them. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot of things. I mean, there's also. I mean, that's that's a way to um, also quickly get your knock up. Uh, but I don't think it's useful. I think it's completely pointless when you EQ and then flash instantly. It's just not too great unless it's for a five man. But in general, it's not great. Uh, but getting that EQ flash sometimes can be good. So one of the things I would recommend is going to practice still for a bit and just spam abilities for a bit. Just unlimited mana, unlimited cooldown and just see what you can kind of do with them. Usually straight line skill shots can always be um, extended or um, changed with flash. Like flash is just OP like that. So right here, like I said, we got her flash. And then look, her flash is gone, Silas kills her. There's not much she can really do in that lane against a Silas when she has no flash. And because of our E, now our E is an 8 second attack speed steroid, but the assist time comes on top of that. So say for example the 8 second ticks um, and they still get that attack speed, then you still get that time for the assist. So right there, you weren't even here anymore and you still get the assist. So get into the habit of just just throwing your flag down in say a team fight, even if you can't get into it, and you'll get assists just of people getting those skills. Yeah. So here we could have also taken walls, just because this isn't up quite yet. But Either way, this worked. Now, this, again, is kind of one of them situations. We F-keyed, which is okay, but then we didn't keep an eye on the lane. So we didn't really know what we were coming to. So see here? You're probably wrapped around. Yeah, so that's one thing, but the reason you didn't is because you couldn't see. So this is the thing. You didn't have the information to know to wrap around here because we didn't look over it. So camera control, I swear to God, is one of the most important things. It's crazy. Yeah, I have tried playing on like unlocked screen, but it's, it's obviously at first it just feels uncomfortable. It's yeah, it's it's like, very it's awkward. I'm not used to playing. Yeah. Like, every game, I've, every game I've kind of played has always been like yeah. a fixed camera kind of perspective it's, so it's when you first go to it unlocked it's very uncomfortable at times yeah. and I feel like I mess up a lot and 
don't put it in the right place and shit. Yeah, so you will. Like, this is one of the things. So it's kind of like, um, it's, it's, it's a fundamental, to be honest, camera control. So it, it's like last hitting on ADC. Like, for example, if I play Ash, I, I personally really don't like Ash's auto attacks. So it makes farming on her a little bit harder for me. I yeah. spanned her for tons of games, did loads of drills, and focused purely on farming, and eventually it just gets better, and then that, that hurdle is gone. Same with kind of um, using locked and unlocked cam. Once you get used to it, it's completely kind of fine. And what you can do as well is you can use your spacebar as like a panic button, you know? So if, say, for example, you're learning unlocked cam, and even if you do it in normals, like, it doesn't matter. Like, sometimes you'll get in a position where you're like, okay, this is kind of difficult, I need a reset, and you can just use space for that. Another thing okay. when you are playing on, on unlocked cam to remember is you kind of want to nudge these walls as much as possible. So these are kind of walls that you can just nudge whenever you want and it will move the entire camera. So right here, say if we were this Silas in lane here, what we'd look to do is we'd look to nudge once or twice down here, maybe even three times, and that will give us um, a view of this area of, of the lane instead of all this area back here where he isn't getting any valuable information. So, yeah, it's just, you're just looking to absorb as much information as possible. Which, again, is hard, and it's very awkward to do. But I promise you, give it 10 to 20 games maximum, and Unlocked Cam will be... I mean, it won't be perfect, don't get me wrong, but you won't really think about Optimal, it anymore. Yeah, yeah it, it, it's just muscle memory. Right right now, you've played till plat, uh, just kind of playing. And, you know, now it's a case of a lot of that muscle memory you've got is just a bit off uh, but yeah so here we've got a camp up and we're close to a spike if we reset here what we're we gonna get pickaxe it's yeah so we just want to make sure that, that we're iron, iron spike whips a lot better yeah it's a very there. big spike so in general you want to be staying on the map until you either have to reset in terms of hp mana or until you have enough gold to reset now you should have um you should set yourself multiple kind of breakpoints when you're looking to leave the base of how much gold you need to reset again. So, for example, um, we could say, okay, well, we need at least 875 gold. We're going to get about 900 from our first clear anyway. So, you know, that doesn't matter. If we get a kill on top of that, great. We snowball sooner. But in general, that most optimal back point for this first level is 1100. So what we'd look to do is we'd play for that 1100. Um, and then as soon as we have that, we can look to reset. So we go, okay, well, um, I'm going to, you know, potentially reset here, War Towards Dragon. There's a lot of different things. Obviously, if you do get rid of um, your rune, the boots rune too, um, and just swap it out, uh, you can also go for Steel Cap's first item, especially when you're playing into champions like Viego, um, who is very reliant on his auto attacks, uh, and it's very, very good for you because you have a lot of damage anyway. Or what, what you would can you even recommend do. changing to instead of boots? Uh, stopwatch or? Uh, so, I mean, sorcery is a very, very strong um, uh, okay. kind of rune page. So you could potentially switch to sorcery. The only thing is you do lose cosmic insight by doing that, which can be a little bit rough. Um, so, I mean, you could change to something like a Sudden Impact and Ravenous Hunter. Uh, which, again, just gives you a bit more early game power. Um, and, you know, it, it, you'll get a bit of healing as well from it, which is great with Gore Drinker on top. Um, so I think maybe try that just because there's some matchups you want to boot sooner. Now, one of the things with J4, though, is this is only kind of a short-term solution. Because once we start nailing this early game, boots become way more valuable again because what we can do is we can get our whip, um, and then we can just go on the map and with only whip we can just get a ton of kills And then once we've got all those kills your boots actually come at a soon enough time because every time you get kills and um, Your boots come faster. So once we're snowballing really hard We can then swap back to inspiration and you know, it's much much easier Okay. I mean if you can get whip first uh, it's Usually better, but after this, we want steel caps now because we want to be able to skirmish Vigo. 
Um, so we got this control ward, nice. Again, we kind of didn't look over this for a very long time. And then we got here in the end. I think this was another point of EQ just being a lot slow. So see, this is the thing as well. When you're in the gank, you actually unlock your camera. So I don't think it'll be as hard for you as you think it will. Because right here, see, we're unlocked. Yeah, we're I already nudging. Because, like, I feel like when I'm doing camps and stuff like that, I don't, like, because obviously, you know, you, you try and kite buffs, etc. Uh -huh. you, you walk back and then all attack. I feel like I, can, cause you, you can't, I can't do that whilst my camera's unlocked or something. Is, but is that fine just to, like, what's it? I mean, you can keep it, yeah, I mean, you can keep it on you when you're killing them. The only thing is, like, so, even on unlocked cam, like, when you're taking camps, you can still have it kind of locked in a way because even if it's unlocked you can still have it so that you're in the center of the screen right so the analogy i always use for this is have you ever played chess yeah so when you play chess what part of the game do you move pieces exactly you wouldn't move the board to move a piece would you you'd move yeah. the pieces first now this is kind of the same with league your this is your board and you are a piece. Like, the minions are actually the <laughs> the players, to be honest. These are OP as shit. These are the entire game in a nutshell. But you're the piece. So the piece is what you need to move. So if you've got this entire screen moving about, it's just going to confuse your brain more than it's going to do well. Because it's like, okay, we see where she is now. But if we move a little bit further down on locked cam, she's all, all of a sudden going to be here. Like, technically, you know? So it's... If we know where everything is and we've got... A stable area that we want to impact and we want to play around then unlock cam will just help you with that a lot more um, but then so right here so see again this was so this was after we'd gone over this kind of confidence thing with the EQ when you're playing Javan you have to play in the fact that your E coming down will always be exactly where you need it if you're making mistakes with your E then that's a number one priority that you have to get sorted so after we mentioned this and this confidence thing, your EQs became much better. Like even like right here. See, easy. Now this was still a little bit slow. Do you, can you see the reason why it was a bit slow or? Don't worry if not. Uh, we'll watch it again. So do you see why it was a little bit slower there? No. So look at the indicator. So see how much you're spamming your abilities to get this down. All right, okay. So we get the E down, and then we're spamming Q. I can I can see it. So see he e, e down, and then we're just spamming that like crazy. But we've got indicator on, so you won't have to spam it anymore. You can just EQ, and it'll just instantly go. And this is the thing you have to kind of become. And this is why one tricking is very very good in lower Edos, because. Yeah. Overall, you just want to be as comfortable as you can with the champ. Like, if I play J4, I know exactly what series of buttons I'm going to press in what order before I'm even there. Like, I just know exactly how the situation's going to go. That's just because I played a ton of J4. So it'll be kind of the same for you, in a way. I so say, like, when I did main jungle, like, this, um, like season 5, 6, 7 kind of thing, like, properly, yeah. I was playing a lot of J4 and Zen. They were my two mains. Yeah, I mean, I, I used to played. spam both too. Very good shots. But, uh, and like I said, like I felt like when I was climbing up this season, it was just a lot easier to do it on like a champ like Fiddle, Kazix, etc. I could just like absolutely destroy someone really quickly. Which uh, obviously J4 can do essentially. Yeah. Feel like it wasn't the best. And obviously he got a lot of buffs in the recent patch, which made them more. Uh, yeah. So the the buffs, right. So the, the thing with Riot um, buffing champs as well is the... The thought process they have behind it is if something changes in a game and a champion that's supposed to be good from that change doesn't become good, then they'll buff them. So J4 excels when he's against farming junglers because his early game pressure on the map Nightmare for some reason. Okay, sorry about that, my PC went crazy. Okay, I'll have to sort that. But, yeah, so your, um, your playstyle into farming junglers is great because you get pressure on the map early while they're still farming. You start getting that mental advantage 
and you once you've got a couple of kills, you can just walk in their jungle and kill them when they're farming. So if you're playing like J4 in something like an Evelyn, your goal is to kill her as many times as possible before she's level 6. Because you're an early game jungler. Your power is in the early game is as soon as you get that level 2. So that's your strength. And that's what you need to play towards. Now, say, for example, if you fall behind levels on a farming jungler, that's going to damage you. But if you've got enough pressure on the map before that, what you end up doing is you then translate after your core items into tankier items. So say, for example, we're 0, 0, and 20. Like, we've got a massive amount of kills. Our team has got 20 kills based on us alone. We end up in a situation there where it's like, okay, well, our team's very fed. All I need to do is pull the trigger and engage, and they'll do the rest. So then you go things like the, the Gargoyles, or the Thorn Mail, or the Spirit Visage, or the Abyssal Mask. Abyssal Mask is extremely underrated on J4 if you can land a good EQ, because it applies to everybody with the knock -em. So here, again, we're just looking to get that E down if we can. Uh, to be honest here, we probably should have committed instead of we turned for this ward. Um, so we just didn't really take into consideration that Silas would steal the unit ult. Um, but it's okay, yeah. we just kind of got distracted. So right here, there's nothing to actually do yet. So what we actually want to do is just uh, clear camps, reset. Um, and again, this would be the point where we get these steel caps. But we haven't really had enough impact on the map yet in order to get them early enough. So this is the only thing with inspiration. Um, which yeah, is why I said for... we're getting them at 10.30 still, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, you've got a few minutes until then. Uh, I'm proper choked up there. Like, I should have just. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. It, yeah. So, this is obviously a lot more common than you think with J4. Um, again, you just have to EQ. Like, you just have to go for it. Okay. So, so then this is this was fine. Actually, we, we could have played this a little bit better, I think. So, right here, we use our EQ way too soon, and then we have to use our ult gap close. He's not getting away, he's got no mobility, he's a GP. And then we can get this because Viego is, was low, and we've got numbers advantage anyway, so you should always just like to use those numbers advantages. And then we clear this off so that we can not come top side again and just go straight into bot lane. So there we go, so it's fine. Phage is actually a surprisingly good item because uh, it gives you a ton of regeneration. So the one of the big things here. So the way that we approach lanes is something to work on as well. So for example, right here, what do you notice um, here? That you could have done. Oh, I put the E further out. You... But in terms of the gank, I probably should have wrapped around the river and came behind them. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, that's correct. Uh, what what specifically makes that good? It's going to, like, force them either to go into my path of knock-up on Blast Cone. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. This Blast Cone is available right now. So, we could have Blast Cone over here, and then we've already cut them off. And then what we can do then is we can use our ultimate to open, especially since this Leona is going to hug Caitlyn this entire time to get away from you. So what we do then is if we come around this way, we just straight up ult them, and then we EQ Caitlyn as soon as she flashes. And this is one of the very good things about J4, is that even if they have flash, you can still catch. So right here, see? Can't really get her now because she's jumped, but... But, you know, we still get Leona. It would have potentially been a double. So this kind of a case of just maximizing that success, to be honest. Yep. And so here, as soon as we see these wards come down, we have to kind of just leave. Um, especially since this pink doesn't actually get this ward back here. So we have to just leave that and just say, whatever, it's fine. So here, this was, so this is another very common J4 thing where you kind of panic a little bit. So right here, it's like, oh, I've got to kill this Leona, I've got to kill her off. The worst thing you can do is panic, use your Q. Because if you use your Q here, which you do, you can never catch her. Whereas if you wait for three seconds, like, 
Like she's only gonna come this. Yeah, she's only gonna come like this. We know exactly where she's gonna go. Maybe she walks up and tries to blast go, and it's not a problem. So what we do here is we just wait for our EQ, and then we just EQ her wherever she is. She'll be here. We just EQ her from like here to here, and then she 100% dies because she got no mana. So yeah, just kind of patience is you know quite important at J4. We do still kill her, but we die for it. And here it's just a case of we have to do as much damage as possible because right here reaction might be oh we need to run but in reality we just need to do as much damage as we can because i mean she dies anyway from it you know so i mean we did okay i mean obviously i know we focus a lot on early game but honestly that's kind of the the go-to with j4 your early game is the most important yeah. yeah if you get ahead enough early you just win the game off it to be honest and this is why he's good. This is why champs like J4, Xin Zhao, that's why they're insanely strong. Like Lee Sin. It's just because they have this early game pressure. And they all follow kind of similar play styles in the early game. But then they just kind of break off in the mid game to late. So here this was just a little bit of a nightmare. We kind of over prioritized this scuttle crab a little bit when we didn't have vision. So one thing you want to do is a lot of the time you want to look at the map before you go for anything and just count how many of them you see. So right here we see three. So we have to establish, okay, this is going to be a 3v2. So if you always prepare for the 3v2, if it turns into a 2v2, you're already prepared, you know? Although another thing that we could have actually done here is, so we go in, okay, we've got nine seconds to survive, right? So we've got eight seconds to stay alive. What do you think you could have done within this six seconds still on screen in order to actually survive this? Um, wait, it's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So your smite is... I think I used my gold drinker far too early there as well. I should wait till yeah, a little, a little. Especially because they're clumped up. Um, now, one of the things with gold drinker as well is you actually get more damage the lower uh, HP you are. So you yeah. do want to be basically using it at that kind of last minute because the damage amp is kind of crazy. Um, like 15% uh, missing health as AD is crazy because AD is very, very valuable. So when we're talking about any kind of stat in the game, AD is the highest value stats with 35 gold per one AD. So if we get uh, 10 AD from something, that's basically an entire kill. Well, more than a kill worth of gold, you know? So that's a good way to kind of break down what is strong and what is not. It's all to do with the gold value. So we could have smited this. At this point, your smite actually heals you for more than what heal heals you. That's how strong it is. So, at this point now, we're very strong. Again, we're just kind of looking to find areas where we can pull the trigger. So right here, again, we isolated the Kale. We killed her off, great. We're in a 3v2 now, so we win through that. So, great. Uh, so at this point, we actually played this fairly well. So, we did actually get that uh, assist anyway. So here force no them the yeah force them to take it because nobody's going to want to take free damage like everybody's first reaction is i'm gonna try and dodge this so you just stand by here and they'll take it and then this is fine to be honest that won't really change much i mean we could have potentially re-engaged here if he would have survived actually and then just killed this guy off or the k even specifically but So, there weren't really that much we could do. Okay. So, see here? Yeah, so this I, I is, just yeah. wrote to the minimap there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. After we saw, but I, just, I wasn't paying attention to yeah. the minimap. No, that's fine. I mean, obviously, it was a coaching session as well. Like, nobody will perform 100% in a coaching session because somebody's watching them and they're not fully focused. But... As long as we can get as many points as possible to just focus on, then that's great. Right, so... Uh, so, we did manage to get a pick here. Oh, here. So, the problem with this is we didn't pull the trigger fast enough. 
So right here, again, we have to make sure that while we're killing these camps, we don't need to be looking at the camp, especially if you use A click. Now, if you use A click as well, you can literally A click here uh, while looking here and you'll still hit it. It's completely fine. So that's another way that you can do things uh, because right now you're focusing or getting your mouse dead on the camp to click it and it's kind of taking up a lot more of your focus than what needs to be. Um, so right here, we see three of them on the map um, already. So it's like, okay, there's three on bot side. Um, and, you know, we have vision of here. I think we actually saw Leona as well earlier. Uh, I swear we saw her on this control wall. But one of the other good control wall spots that you can get that I was speaking about earlier is just put it here. Like in this little bush, you know which okay. one I mean? It's like the, the teardrop pink. It looks like a little bit of a teardrop. Just put it there. And what you'll find is uh, if you put it on the very end, it'll see the red buff. And that will stay alive for the majority of the game. A lot of the times in these elos. Because people just don't walk in that brush. Ever. Yeah. And it gives a ton of uh, sight. So right here, we see them there. But we see that Caitlyn is here. So it's like, okay... If anybody else shows up around here, we can just pull the trigger. So right here, as soon as we see him, we need to instantly start pinging. And then walk back a little bit. So maybe just a little bit to bait him. And then just EQ him here. And then Sivir kills him. And then you avoid all of this that happened here. Because we just let him walk for free. So it's kind of like, he just completely griefed, to be honest. And we kind of just let it go. You know? We didn't even get the EQ on him. Yeah, we gave him a chance to get back yeah. to... To, yeah, to his carries. So we ended up dying for it. Uh, I mean, there, what we could have done is as soon as we ulted, um, we just flash out. I mean, we are rooted yeah, here. He's trapped in there. Yeah, because yeah. the thing is, so what we should be looking like, the thing we need to realize in these situations is, so we already took tenacity in our runes. So this is why we went with steel caps still. And this is why we took tenacity. So if we actually look, so the place I want you to focus on is this area above and your bar now what you'll actually find is it will tell you all the status effects that are applying to you at that point so right here he was challenge channeling now we're stunned okay now we're not stunned so we have an opportunity where we can flash so we can potentially flash in this moment up and the reason we can do this is because we've taken tenacity in our rings otherwise this i think would have been perma cc and then here we get rooted uh, again, we have an opportunity here where we're rooted. If we're just spamming that flash key to flash out, and again, he dies. Because then, on top of that, we're stunned. You see what I mean? Yeah, because he was already dead. Yeah, he yeah, 100%. Business. After after I came back from being rooted, yeah. he was already dead, yeah. Because the thing you also have to think, I mean, he could have potentially ulted out of there, but as soon as he started channeling that ult, you can instantly flash, and he's stuck. He's not getting out. Unless he flashes, which is actually fine. So we end up winning that fight pretty hard, um, based on the fact that we picked Viego off, to be honest. Um, so that was fine. So here, uh, I wouldn't give Volley, but I wouldn't give your laners this much pressure over your camps. Just go and take the red buff, smite it away if you have to. Like, you can't fall this far behind on XP. Because the Viego is less KP than you, but higher level. And it's because you just let Volley take your camps. Which, yeah. you know... In, in high elo, like if, say, for example, this was a challenger game and you've got Jinx ADC, then, of course, like, she gets a CS because the more damage she does, the less time you need to tank. So it's completely fine. Whereas a Volley Bear, he's just going to be tanking at this point. So those camps do nothing for him, whereas those camps are going to allow you to tank for longer. You haven't even got Sterak yet because he's taken all your top side. Uh, but, again, this was another one of the situations. As soon as we pull the trigger, again, camera control a little bit. She's very overextended and we don't see. So, camera a little bit more, again, have it over this area of interest. So, you just have to say to yourself uh, when you're moving your camera, like, where do I need to look right now? What, what information am I going to get about the game that I can use? And then here, great ult. We lock them all in. Volley ult, you know. It's usually a death sentence if you get a big ult on multiple people. Yeah, I got three of them in the same bit because I think one of them yeah. flashed into it. Yeah, it was crazy. Um, and then, yeah, here, always the inhibs first. The inhibs are going to give you the prior on the next wave. Oh, sorry, not this one, the one after. The, 
Uh, sorry, no, it is this one. It's just very small. So you've got your super here, which means that they're going to... I mean, super minions have more AD and HP than your AD and your tank. Uh, I think oh. they'll have like 300 AD and like 3k HP. So they're going to be very, very strong. Like, so they have to match them. Yeah, they have to clear it. So you've basically got a sick man right now pushing down there. So since you've got this inhib, the Baron is easy. Whereas if you didn't get the inhib, they could just collapse on the Baron and potentially end things. Here, everybody's resetting. You just reset too. Because right now, your goal is we have Sterex in base. That's our core items. This is probably the strongest spike we're going to get. Because after this, all the items you get are just there to keep you alive. So this is like your biggest spike. So you need to get to base, spend it, and then get on the map and use it. Um, which we do do, and it nearly wins as a game, but we mess up a few more times. So Gargoyles is great because, again, nice big shield. On top of that shield, what you can do is if you drop um, to... Um, if you lose... Cent like, if you drop to, like, 20 to 30% HP, and then you use your um, Gargoyles, you get the Sterak shield, the Gargoyle shield on top, and you're still getting that 15% bonus AD from your Gore Drinker. Yep. Because the shields don't actually count as HP. So you end up doing a ton of damage for a ton of time. And then if they all jump on you, you just Gore Drinker and just heal it all back up anyway. So it, it's slightly difficult to use the item, don't get me wrong. But once you know what to actually look out for and how to use it, things become much easier. So right here, see, we get this crab. Crab is okay. It's only going to take us a little bit um, to actually get. Uh, but now, what do you think your plan should have been from here? We should have wins but that aren't mid lane to oh. get, because we've obviously the minions, the super minions are going to push mid instinctively without you doing anything. Okay, yeah, and that's right. to answer that or the minions are just going to tower, so then we push out all our lanes and then we should also be trying to see what the next objective is. So okay, right. yeah, there's one more thing that you're missing there. Uh, one more thing. Uh, there's an indicator on the map right now. So what what else can you look to do with yeah, this priority? The, the vision in the jungle. Uh, yeah, yeah, it is about the jungle. Into Is it the fact that they're all top lane? And that's one thing. Oh, is red about to start? Yeah. So a red is spawning, and B, I think these two camps are also up. So we have Baron, which is push power, which we've got in mid. Siv is also bot. So we could have gone and helped her take this and then potentially siege this considering there's, what, four of them top? Yep. Uh, the Leona's dead. Uh, and yeah, I think that's all four of them. GP, K, Diego. I'm not sure if GP was there. I think a GP might have just ulted. No, GP was there, I think. Was there? I swear I just saw him. Uh, yeah, he's there. He's behind Oh, yeah, he is, yeah. So you've got four people top lane. Um, the only person that's going to stop you is Kale. So, in this situation, we just go for this bottom in here. This is the yep. thing, the game is telling you what it wants you to do. We have this in here, so this is pushing. Siv is there, Siv has so much wave clear, it's unreal. So what we do now, is we go and help her get this, we help her get this in here, and then what do you think we do after that? Push top. Yeah, that's all we have to do then. Just have one person push both of these waves, four of us go top, we get this in here, as soon as that one's gone, this Baron's going to be up again. We get the Baron. There is no way that their team comp can clear against triple... Uh, well, sorry. Against six super minions. Because once you get all three, you get double super double supers yeah, yeah. in lane. So six super minions, if you time the waves right and Baron buff, is almost impossible to defend against. So that's kind of how you want to look to close the games out. Right here, we have Baron. We have Pressure. And we've gone and taken our camps. There's never any any world whatsoever that these camps are gonna get taken in this game state. Yeah, it's impossible. Yeah, the map, they yeah. can never they can never get them ever. So these camps are completely safe for now. What we need to do is stop them getting theirs because if they want to get back into this game, what they probably do is I mean it won't happen in this year though. But what you do at higher level is the kale would actually go and just start taking every single camp now, and she just yeah, clears. Yeah, she just clears everything, gets 16, is a complete god. Or the GP, to be honest, he's just a strong late game. Um, and then they basically just clear everything away. And 
then all of a sudden they funneled into it. Whereas if you're clearing everything away, the only gold they're going to get is from the minions in lane, which is going to be three lanes, which, you know, if we're pressuring them in them lanes as well, then there's really nothing they can do. Like, they're going to get the exact same amount of gold as we are, but we already have a huge gold lead. So they'll never bring that lead back unless they get shutdowns, which, you know, is also a possibility, but it's always going to happen. Here we just didn't press that E. I mean, it happens. Yeah. So here we push this. Again, we could have got that bot tower and it did, which would have been way better, but... Um, so here, Volley... Uh, I, I could have swore Volley had TP. Did we press tab? Let's have a look. So another thing is, we don't press tab anywhere near enough. So just press tab and have a look what, what you have for the fight. Like, does your top laner have TP? Does your uh, ADC have flash? Like, determine if you want to take the fight based on that. Because here, Volley's yeah, TP. Volley, Volley was TP then, yeah. Yeah. So he did TP, but we didn't know he was going to, if that makes sense. So here I think, we. I think I, I, after I saw him, t I saw on the map he was TP'd, and that's when I turned around to kind of engage. Yeah, you that's can see fine. TP'd on the ward. Yeah, completely fine. So here, and um, we jump in, we get them, great. So one thing we actually want to look to do here is since we haven't used EQ to get close to them, what we can do is we can ult them, and then we just EQ to safety. So we just flash ulted, okay? You know, we didn't get the K of the Viego. It's a little bit off, but. They're trapped in here. They're not getting out. There's no way of them getting out unless they flash. So what you do is you EQ here and you've just stalled them here. You've just kept them here while this volley comes. He'll just ult in. Everybody else will come down. This will be a, a complete bloodbath, you know? But what we do is we've already engaged. We've already controlled the area. And now we stay. Like we, our shields kept us alive. So our items serve their purpose. But then, because we choose to go back in, we die. Whereas, what we could have done is come back, come to the Sivir, but just made her kill the Leona, which she kills her super, super quick. And then, we look to EQ at a later point, and then just go drink off her HP. Yeah. So, so that's kind of how we want to play it. We don't want to go kind of crazy all in, because, I mean, they completely win off this. And this was... Funny enough, this was the game-ending mistake. Now, obviously, this isn't a huge mistake. It's just how you kind of view your abilities. But this kind of did lose the game because your team were kind of dumb, you know? Continue. Yeah. Whereas if you were there, you could have finished that off. You know what I mean? So from this point, this is obviously just a bit of late game. So, it's actually such a shame we didn't get out of here. Again, Indicator kind of screwed you a little bit though. Because we got Kate's Flash. Um, so, so if we would have just... Actually, we didn't have Q. It, it didn't even matter, actually. Yeah. But, uh, actually, this is a fight where Sivir gets zoned off, right? Yeah. Shame. Sivir is like the main damage dealer. If she gets caught out of position, it's kind of over. Although this fight was... Uh, I mean, the volley wasn't actually anywhere near, though. So it's kind of a little yeah. bit risky. If we would have just waited a little bit. Because the thing is, so right here, this kind of... We were just a little bit impatient because right now, their goal is to get up to this Baron and potentially pressure it. So as long as they got no vision, we can just sit here and wait for them with our vision. And actually, we don't have any, but which is a shame. We can just wait for them to come and then we just jump on them as they come to the Baron. Because right now, they don't know if we're doing Baron or not. We could just be on the Baron, you know, at this point. Uh, like, like uh, setting it up. So. So, yeah. A little bit, uh, just a little bit patient. Uh, and then this fight, we got melted. So, right here. So, what do you notice about this fight? I'll, I'll let you tell me what you notice about this fight. Four of them are all going towards Volley and Wuhan as herself. Yeah, so they're split focused. Yeah. Uh, so and Sivir is here. Engaged. Yeah, we should have probably took out Leona first and then. Leona? I mean, you're on the right tracks, but not quite. What do you see with the Leona? Um, 
Um, what she's got? What she's got? Baron. I'm not sure. What do you see behind her? What does this uh, indicator mean? This is the other side of the indicator. This means that she's bound to somebody with her items. Ah, uh, right, okay. The Caitlyn is here. You can see her on the map, just a little bit there. So the Kate is there. So what do we know about the last fight that would have changed this fight? What what happened of interest in the last fight where we died? The Severe got quopped up in CC. Yeah. What happened I... with um, us, though? See here. So we'll go over it here. This is I, the, I the power of Vault. Cage. Okay, yeah. There's... And then I don't get the Caitlyn and the ult. Okay, so why don't you get Caitlyn? She was too far back for me. No. I guess. You, you did hit her. Oh, she, she was. Yeah, she'd eat out. No. Let's have another look. So. Flashed out. Yeah. Oh, so she's got no flash. So she's got no flash. This was 28 25. And now. Uh, and now. Minutes, at this point, yeah, yeah three minutes uh, across. I mean, we had, we knew she had no flash. I think we did mention it while you were playing. Uh, but yeah, so we know she's got no flash now. So she can't get away from your ult. So the only thing that can happen is Leona can potentially jump on Sivir. If Sivir plays it properly, she can just E and she'll still be able to damage Kate. So then we just kill Kate here. And that's a massive amount of their damage gone. And then we can deal with the Kale and then the GP. Like, their comp is extremely difficult for you to actually end this game at this point, to be honest. it's They have a GP, Kale, uh, they're two of the hardest scaling champions. So, at this point, the game was probably over anyway, but again, there's so many points um, to cover. Now, I know we've it's been a lot of information to take in, this is why I record it um, and put it on YouTube. Another thing I would heavily recommend is, do you have any kind of sticky notes anywhere? No, not really. No. Okay. So if you... I can get some, though. Yeah, so if you grab some, then you probably get like a thousand of them for like 20p. Um, but what you can do is, around your monitor, what you want to do is, so say from this session, like take notes of kind of some of the points that we covered. Um, like for example, using your combo quicker, looking around the map, unlocked cam, um, you know, like walking into fights easier, using your EQ a little better, and then put it on a note. So put it on a sticky note and just attach it to like the side of your monitor. So like the, you know, you've got like the bezel around it. Yeah. So just like stick it to the bezel, not so it covers your screen at all, but just so it's there. And then what will end up happening is as you're playing, you'll actually look at the sticky note and be like, oh, wait, shit, I need to focus on that. So then you'll focus on that more. And even if you don't read the sticky note, in your brain, you're constantly reading it no matter what. You're like subconsciously taking in the information. That's why like if, for example, you had a sticky note on your monitor for a week and you went to the middle of town, you'd probably still remember what is on that sticky note just from looking at it so much, you know? It's, so, it's subconscious or you just yeah, take it. In, you yeah. get it ingrained into your head and then as long as you've got enough points to work on, which I know like I, I didn't want to seem too harsh, but I know there's a lot of points and um, that always is in kind of like these lower elos um, because it's kind of like you're transitioning from playing a casual game to a hyper competitive game. So yeah. it, there's always going to be a lot. Um, but yeah, even if you say take five notes and just put them and just work on those five, you'll see an improvement, like, instantly. Um, so, yeah, so I think we'll wrap that up around here. Um, do you have any kind of, like, questions about anything we covered or anything like that before we finish you up? Kind of touched, you kind of touched an hour, so would you recommend to just focus on maining the one champion or maybe two seconds if your champion gets banned somewhat uh do i mean, recommend to do that rather than kind of jumping around in a way yeah like yeah so i mean time, i'll try and match my team in terms of like if i see that we've got a lot of ad in terms of like top lane mid lane i'll try and go like fiddle sticks because uh, we need ap not really i mean the thing is like even in the silos i mean you will start transitioning into games where if you've got like no uh, ap it can be a little difficult but the thing is when you're especially when you're playing these early game champions you are already in a position where you can shut the game down before they even buy resistances and then this kind of this is kind of like a 
an important concept as well because say for example if we're playing Kale mid and we want to get a Nash's Tooth first item. The goal is to get to that first item and be strong as quick as we can. Now, what a lot of players will do in all elos, this isn't even specific to low elo, is what they'll do is they'll die once to say Kale and then they'll be like, oh shit, or if we're the Kale, they'll um, die once to say the Silas mid and they'll be like, oh, like, I need to buy resistances. Like, if I don't buy resistances, he's just going to kill me. But then the problem with that is... You end up then in, uh, well, they end up in a situation where they've bought resistances to defend themselves, but now they cannot do anywhere near enough damage to actually get any kills. So it's like they've invested into a defensive resource when they're behind and they've completely ended their game, which is huge. Now, this is very important because it also works vice versa, right? So if you're ridiculously ahead, and you've got more than enough damage to blow people up anyway. Your main goal is to just go resistances so that you can blow more people up um, in the same time frame, you know. So don't worry too much about the composition. Like, you will get some games where you're like, okay, that was very hard. I wonder if it was comp. Like, But the thing is, you're playing J4. And the most important thing for solo queue is engage. Like, if I'm playing something like Evelyn, I can get very heavily comp diffed if I don't play early game perfectly. Because my main way of playing the game is to isolate somebody and one-shot them. Which, if I can't do that, kind of useless. Whereas J4, you can just go tanky and you can just be a main engage for your team. EQ, knock them up, ah, uh, like that's how you then play the game. So, as long as you have an engage option on your team, the damage spread isn't as important. Now, I don't want to say it's not important at all, but it's nowhere near as important and you don't really want to focus on it yet. You just want to focus on one champion, play them properly, smooth mechanics. So smooth mechanics are always important because it's kind of that um, muscle memory that you know exactly what to do before you've even done it. So smooth mechanics are good. Um, just understanding what to do on your champion at what point and then knowing your champion well enough that the only thing you have to do is play an opener in chess. Like with jungle, as long as you play your opener properly, the game becomes way easier. Way easier. So, yeah, overall, I'd just say stick to the same champ. Uh, J4 is... The mechanical difficulty of him isn't that high. So it's going to come down to a lot of your decision making. But I can already tell by some of the things that you've said that you've looked into a lot of information about the game previously anyway. But it's just... You get a lot of kind of situations in these elos where... Players will look at tons of different information and strategies and stuff like that of how to improve at the game. Like they'll watch tons of video content of how to do this, how to do that. But unless you actually watch the content of something that is specifically impacting your gameplay, then you're not really going to see that much of an improvement. So like there's, I can tell you've looked at, say, positioning in lanes because you knew about them obviously around that top pocket of the lane with the Kale. But... Um, we're not using that camera properly to punish her when she's in that top pocket. So it's kind of like, you know that information, but you're not using it properly, if that makes sense. Yeah. So, so it's, it's kind of essential to play a ton of games with unlocked camera to get used to it. And yeah, start. unlocked yeah. cam, the same champ, uh, just learning lanes. Like, uh, I mean, it, it's very beneficial as well. Um, if at some point you just play some normal games in a lane, um, I'd probably recommend like top lane. And just kind of get a grasp for what the minions are doing. Like, there's, there's multiple rules for kind of... I don't think you went top once, so we can't really... Uh, when were you bot? Uh, bot quite our way on. Probably about eight minutes. Seven yeah. minutes. Okay. So, I just want to view... Okay, so right here. So, easy things that you can take into consideration. This is very wonky. So, this is your halfway point. The main things you really need to be looking for as a jungler is where the minions are positioned here and how many of them. So in terms of basics, do you know how um, many minions are required to freeze? Do you know how yeah. freeze works? Uh, so technically it's three full HP casters only in addition to a full wave in this area. In addition to a full wave. So that's, that's a key. So that's why some people use four because that one minion will hold them while the other ones come and then the melee is spread out and 
end up in like this battle formation. So that's usually why four, but yeah, three is all you need. And as soon as that condition isn't met, then it's going to be a slow push, depending on your lanes. So this is why it's important that you check as well. Because if your ADC is just randomly autoing the minions here, then you need to probably get there as soon as possible because chances are they're going to get ganked anyway. So you can come down through the lane and just sit here and stop that. On top of that, you also need to look to break freezes. So if laners do hold a freeze, even if it's, say, top, as a jungler, your goal is to come and break that freeze and save your lane. This is so important because saving your lanes in solo queue is insane because you're then going to shut down the enemy jungler's opportunity to do anything whilst also improving yours. Um, now, there's another rule uh, that's very important. It's called the push and pull rule. So have you ever heard of this rule before or? Uh, not in weak. Okay, so push and pull rule is basically um, based on the minions what they're gonna do So if say for example, there is a larger minion wave Here what is gonna happen with this wave? It's so we're going to push towards yeah, the, uh, it will slow it. push now. Why will it slow push? Because there's more minions going to build up Yeah, so on that side. Yeah, so it's to do with um, a game uh, a, a, a game mechanic called reinforcements. Yeah, they're they're going to get to that because they're more over the halfway point. The minions yeah. on the, the short side are going to get there quicker, which yeah. is going to attack quicker. They will game. reinforce the wave sooner. So because they reinforce the wave and more importantly spread out, they'll do more damage for a longer period of time and then it'll push. Now, obviously, it's this way you can see a slow push. So if, say, for example, you see your bot lane starting a slow push, as a jungler, what you can do is you can just say, okay, fuck this, I'm playing J4. I don't need CS as much. I'm just going to walk through into bot lane, and I'm just going to look to dive with this big slow push, especially if you have flash. Obviously, you didn't, but in general. And now, again, vice versa. If it's the other way, and then it's pulling. Now, it's a little bit more complex. Like, push and pull usually re also refers to what you do around it. Like, in a lane, if you're pushing and you have a bigger wave, you'd look to fight and trade. Whereas, if it's pulling in, you'd look to play defensive and just last it and wait for it to come in. Um, but it's vice versa. If the wave is pulling in, then that's also somewhere you should look to be. Because if they're building a big slow push here, in about a minute's time, there's going to be a huge wave coming in. So you need to be there for that to, again, stop any potential dives and just basically defend them from getting dove. So you can literally just come down, put a control ward here, a normal ward here, and then just go and farm your camps. Like, if the enemy jungler then shows bot to go with that slow, you just go and take the herald, for example. And then their topside jungle. Stuff like that, you know? So it's like these slight decisions based on so many things uh, will, will help you climb. So it's all about kind of making those decisions and then playing around that. But you have to know what to look for first. So this is the thing where it's it's kind of complex. But so yeah, overall that's that. Um. So yeah, did you have any other kind of questions or anything just before we wrap up or? Uh, no, I've not got anything at the moment. But I've, um, okay. No, I've, I've also obviously watched back and video and stuff like that. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. So I'll upload it um straight away. Um. Like I said, just take some notes, whack it on sticky notes, good stuff. And if you need anything, obviously, I think you already joined my server, right? Yeah, I joined it earlier. Yeah, so if you need anything, obviously, just pop it in the Ask channel. Um, and yeah, so if not, then good luck with your games. Um, and I will speak to you again soon. Perfect, thank you very much. No worries, man. Catch you in a bit. Have a good day. Take care. And you, man. Bye, bye, bye. bye. Righty then, let me just get a drink. Uh, and then I'll go over World's Patch. I'll be right back.
Right then. Oh, my streamlabs has crashed.